uh, we are here to uh, discuss about initial professional development and seventh month master's course for civil and structural engineers uh, initial professional development means how to develop your structural engineering experience uh, that we are going to discuss today and we'll discuss uh, regarding the training program also so today's agenda is uh, I'll brief you about uh, our introduction, myself, uh, my introduction, and our company projects and all. Then we'll discuss initial professional development uh, in structural engineering. So how to develop your experience and what are the skills required <coughs> in that uh, uh, area. Uh, then we'll discuss summary of seven month mass industry master's course with IPD, that is initial professional development. And then benefits of, of our course and fee structure at the end, we'll discuss. So let me introduce myself, uh, myself Anil Mahdik. Uh, I'm a chartered engineer of India and uh, director of HCBLC company, which is design and build company. I'm also director of Learning Beyond Institute, uh, which is giving training to the civil and structural engineers and working as a structural consultant, structural auditor and retrofitting consultant in the company. I'm having more than 20 years of experience in structural and civil engineering fields. Uh, regarding my specializations uh, in the projects and career, uh, I'm specialized in design of uh, high-rise buildings. And then I have done the industrial projects, uh, that is design of industrial projects, uh, like manufacturing companies and all. I have also designed the stadiums, cricket stadiums. Then I did the design build projects also. And I'm uh, specialized in value engineering in design also. And I have done the structural audits and retrofitting of old projects in industrial sector then uh, building sector and uh, water sector and i have done sewage and water treatment plant design also uh, in different areas uh, regarding region wise also i have um, i am experienced uh, all over the world in many countries uh, so i did the indian projects in uh, building sector then uh, water sector and industrial sector i have also done the projects in usa I also did the projects for New Zealand and Australia uh, in different sectors. And I have done the high-rise building projects in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And also uh, did the projects in Fiji and UK also. So almost all major cities and in uh, different countries all over the world I worked for. Uh, so these are a few examples which I have done in my career. Uh, that is uh, Dr. D.Y. Patil Cricket Stadium. Uh, where currently the IPL is going on uh, in Navi Mumbai. So this is the whole uh, design of this project uh, I have done, including the seating arrangement, then roofing structure, roofing structure. Then I have done also the design of this suspended roof, uh, then badminton courts, sw swimming pools, squash courts like that, then clubhouse and media center like this, and all seating RCC arrangement, uh, which is uh, for the seating of the spectators. Then this is uh, industrial projects I did. See, I have done a lot of projects, but few projects I just want to show you. So Tata Marco, Marco Polo project, uh, which is bus manufacturing company uh, in Dharwad. So I have also involved in this project as a structural designer. Uh, so the complete uh, plant uh, structures like uh, sheds, then uh, retaining walls, trimix floors, then uh, steel supporting structures, gantry girders like that. Uh, we have designed that and I was involved in that. Then this is the hydro power plant in America. So I was also involved in this project uh, in major part of the shop drawings and design part. These are the high rise buildings which I had done in Abu Dhabi, 40 story building in uh, Middle East. Then uh, projects in India also, high rise building projects in Mumbai, Pune, and major part of the India, uh, 25 stories, then 30 story, 40 story like this. Uh, these are the projects which we have done uh, in school buildings and college buildings. Then we have also done the projects for builders and developers in uh, housing, then apartment schemes, high rise buildings like that in India. Then this is the project of uh, sewage water treatment plant situated in Thane. Uh, we have done this uh, also, uh, which is a municipal corporation sewage treatment plant uh, situated in Thane. 
so we have also involved in design of uh, design and drawings of this project and these are the projects of structural audit and retrofitting uh, where we have done the total structural audit of the different manufacturing companies uh, like POSCO, then SECO. Uh, we have also done the retrofitting and strengthening work of uh, different uh, structures and uh, members like columns, beams and footings like that. Uh, for different companies also, we have also done the structural audit of residential buildings, uh, which are municipal corporation buildings or private buildings also. And these are some industrial projects where we have done the design and construction of machine foundations, then design and construction of industrial sheds, warehouses, PEB structures like that. Uh, we have done the gantry girder design, retaining wall design like that also. Uh, these are industrial projects where we have done the design of chimneys, their foundations, and we have done the construction of foundation also. Uh, and then design of retaining walls and their construction. So we are actually into design also and construction also. So uh, all round experience uh, we, uh, myself and our companies having in different <coughs> sectors. Uh, these are the industrial projects, uh, interior part of uh, robotic manufacturing companies, electronics companies. Then we have done the design of trusses, their fabrication work like that for different clients. Uh, this is also one of the project of structural design and value engineering, especially where we have used our structural engineering uh, knowledge and concepts to save the cost of the project. So we have done different options for this client. And we have come across with a final solution of a, a structural design, which is cost effective and which also saves the time of the project. So this is one of the project. So these are the projects which we are doing uh, for different clients uh, in uh, high rise building sector, then water sector like sewage treatment plants and water treatment plants. And also in uh, industrial projects also. Uh, for different manufacturing company. So if you look at these uh, projects, uh, so you'll come to know that there are a lot of scope for civil engineers in these sectors. So if you develop your skills in these areas, along with your theoretical knowledge, basic concepts of the structural engineering, then practical application on the softwares. So if you put it together, all together, then it becomes the experience for you, which helps you to get the jobs or to even start your businesses or consultancy firms. So we will see what, how to develop that experience. If you want to do these kind of projects for yourself also, for your career, then you should have skills in you. And uh, if you are freshers or maybe working somewhere, and you can develop your experience and that experience, we call it as an initial professional development. Uh, initial professional development means uh, after graduation, you are developing experience, then software skills, then basic conceptual skills and actual application on the projects. So that complete knowledge, we call it as an initial professional development. So it becomes as a foundation for your career. And that foundation, that knowledge will boost your confidence. So let's see what is meant by IPD. So IPD is nothing but bridging the gap between educational qualification and professional qualification. That means whatever you have learned in the college, what knowledge, theoretical knowledge you learn and what is expected in the profession and pro in uh, real projects. So there you need some, uh, there is a definitely a gap between these two. So if you want to bridge up this gap and that is filled up by this initial professional development. So that is the period where you learn. For example, if you join this training program, uh, you will develop a lot of skills in this training program and that will bridge that gap. And you can become a professional and then you can use your professionalism in the projects and that will definitely boost your career it will help you to increase your salary and increase your confidence and experience definitely and you can independently work and this knowledge is so helpful that you only you can start your own work uh, like businesses why it is needed and definitely why it is needed uh, all of you know that in college we don't learn much things uh, as far as the practical part is concerned uh, definitely whatever we learn in college is definitely essential theoretical knowledge because without which we definitely can, cannot work in the projects it is definitely essential but it is not only sufficient we can say because in college uh, the 
whatever we learn it is driven by the syllabus so there is a there are subjects and there is a syllabus which is theoretical syllabus we can say but in profession there is no as such theory but we should apply whatever knowledge we have on the practical problems so it is driven by the practical practical problems in college we have a lot of teachers who give the training to us uh, but in the profession generally we don't have any teachers we need to learn on our own uh, in college we don't apply our knowledge on the practical projects but in a profession you need to apply your knowledge on real projects practical application is required generally college in college students are passive listeners because they are not, nothing to do with the real project so even though they learn or they don't learn doesn't make much difference because they need to only give the exam but in profession you must get involved on the in the projects and in the work and you should also give the solutions as per your knowledge in college it is exam oriented learning in profession it is real problem oriented learning so because you need to work on the real projects in college whatever we learn whatever questions we have it has only single solution so one question one answer and you get the marks but in pro reality in profession even though there is a one problem you can have a lot of solutions for that so you should have lateral thinking for that so that you can have multiple solutions then in college conceptual knowledge gets diluted see this is very important point see what happens we have a lot of subjects in the colleges and we don't really find much time to focus on any subject in reality because the time is also very less in college so conceptual knowledge gets diluted due to that but in reality in profession if you want to apply on the knowledge on the real projects you should have the conceptual knowledge understanding like engineering principles like engineering mechanic mechanics strength of materials like that conceptual part which helps you to take the decisions on the projects and that's why this ipd is essential because uh, generally we don't get this uh, opportunity uh, anywhere because this combined uh, knowledge is generally not available in the market and even though you get the jobs you don't get this all round knowledge together so it's really important actually this is the practice all over the world in uk usa australia new zealand like this in our country also indirectly the people do but there is no structured format and we will learn that through structured format so what is required in interview definitely whenever we face any interview uh, the interviewers are asking the questions so that they try to understand what is your understanding about the subject and what are your skills like software skills conceptual skills and practical application skills then what knowledge you have and what is the depth of knowledge you are having so that is generally tested in the interviews either you go for the interviews or you you one can go to the presentation to the clients also if you are doing your business so it is required and that also that comes through only knowledge and really confidence in you and this confidence gets developed through this ipd so there are stages to achieve this professional qualification first is the educational base that is graduation which we have done either you are diploma civil b civil or m tech structures or any masters degree so this is the first definitely qualification you should have the graduation certificate then you have to develop this ipd because you need to go to the industry for jobs or business because you need to face the interviews so you need to develop this ipd then interviews then you get, get the jobs uh, good jobs you get it after this process and even though you get the jobs <clears throat> you need to increase your knowledge your experience and your practical project application and that we call it as a continuous professional development cpd so this is the way we develop our career throughout uh, say many years uh, till our retirement we can say and this is the process by which in industry the people are getting the experience and if you want to develop this ipd then this training program is designed in that way for your and we are there as a trainers uh, who will help you to get this ipd done through this training program so let's see what we are covering here uh, in the, our ipd we are covering four important sectors uh, that is high rise building sector industrial sector water sector which covers water and sewage treatment plants 
and beam application that is revit structures so these are the four sectors we will cover in ipd so if you want to work in these areas in these sectors as a civil engineer and structural engineer especially so you need to have a lot of skills and that skills we will discuss what skills are required if you want to work in these sectors so there are almost six uh, important skills so these are the skills uh, like uh, we generally call it as a core objectives uh, of this ipd so if you want to really develop your ipd then you need to develop these skills like personal skills engineering skills then management and commercial skills other discipline knowledge apart from the civil engineering you should have other knowledge also like mechanical electrical like this basic knowledge i'm telling then software skills definitely this is very important and whatever you have learned through these skills you should apply on the real projects so these are the six skills let's see in detail in personal actually mainly communication skill is uh, seen in this and you should have the professional membership like this and basics learned in the schools uh, we will see in detail also then in engineering generally your conceptual knowledge of the engineering like mechanics strength of materials then how to develop the structural form like uh, putting the column positions like that then how to analyze so analysis basic concepts frame analysis then design basic concepts is codes then drawings you should be able to do the drawings also either in autocad or revit or manually also you should know how to design the rcc members you should know how to design steel structures basics of structural audit and retrofitting in management and commercial you should know what is meant by project management what is meant by bar charts what are the resources involved in the projects then how to prepare the boq what are the rates of labors and material you should know this in commercial part and in other disciplines you should know the architectural drawing how to read that then geotechnical reports land survey country survey mep services so this at least apart from your civil part you should know these other parts also and softwares if you want to work in those four sectors which i discussed then you should know all these softwares like etab safe rcdc stad pro excel program autocad revit and adobe professional so this is the real practice uh, you go anywhere or in the world you will see that for those sectors rs building water sector and industrial sector these are the softwares which are used these are popular softwares and if you want to work there you should know these softwares then let's see in detail uh, all those objectives so in personal communication skills is very important communication skills either it it is oral communication like uh, speaking with uh, different vendors and different people or it may be written skills like writing the mails uh, writing letters or writing reports like calculation reports design basis reports whatever document or structural audit reports like that so you should have these skills uh, writing skills then sketching and drawing preparation skills is very important because we are engineer and we are civil engineers mainly and drawing is an important part of communication and even though you learn softwares like autocad revit you should know how to draw the drawings by sketching also by pencil because even though there is a technology sketching is also important and presentation skills like preparation of ppts then presentation like this i am giving to you because you need to present in front of the clients in front of the your team or your vendors like that then you should have the memberships also like institution of engineers issc or international memberships because this uh, shows you that you are involved in the projects and you are a professional actually that gives the we can say a label to you or we can say stamping that you are a professional engineer that helps you uh, to get the knowledge also through journals because these uh, memberships are giving journals also either monthly or quarterly journals and there is a lot of knowledge uh, available there uh, regarding the civil engineering and structural engineering then school basics like physics geometry it is required because see what happens even though we are civil engineers after pass out also we forget certain physics concepts and geometrical concepts like how to draw what is the area of triangle area of circle or see this is required uh, generally on sites uh, for area calculation in boq preparation or it may be center line preparation 
or putting the centers on the side like this so this is geometrical knowledge is also important triangle rectangle circles basics then in injury engineering if you want to work as a structural engineer conceptual part comes first conceptual means behavioral understanding how the structure will behave like how will it deflect and uh, then what is the limiting deflection what is the strength of material in that uh, is it durable will it long for a lo long time how is the aesthetic part uh, as per the architectural drawing what is the cost of the project so all this conceptual part you should know you should know what is structural stability like this serviceability so whatever you do as a concept design it should follow these parameters and you should take care of this uh, we learn this uh, in college ac actually but we generally don't know how to apply on the real projects so that is required then what is the loads and load path if there is a two way slab how the load will go if there is one way slab then or how the load will go from beam to column how the bending moments will develop how will it deflect like this in earthquake and other things so conceptual understanding is required regarding the analysis and framing for example this strength you know this we learn uh, what are the permissible stresses stresses and strengths like this so if you don't want to crack the beam then what should you do in this case to prevent the breaking or if you want to prevent the deformation and deflection what we, will you do in this so how to calculate the deflections of the beams and frames and how to limit that also how to uh, give the size to the beams how to give the size to the column like that all this knowledge knowledge is required and ultimately you should make the structure stable that means it should not collapse so all these basics are required to understand in the conceptual part like this loads and load path one way two way slabs so how to do put the columns how to put the beams and how to transfer the load from beams to columns like this so this knowledge is required even though we learn softwares without this knowledge learning software is of no use actually because it is a gen, uh, it is a tool softwares are tool like calculator and if you don't know these concepts you cannot apply on the softwares then second engineering concept part is the analysis you should know how to analyze the frames how to analyze the beams how to draw the bending moment diagram shear force diagrams either it is for rcc buildings it may be for water tanks it may be for steel structures you should know how to do this you should know what are the loads types like dead loads live loads earthquake loads wind loads you should know what is codes are used for that and what are the clauses in that in the analysis you know this deflected shapes bending moments for vertical load lateral loads so this knowledge is essential for analysis for uh, even multi story buildings and second like bend, drawing the bending moment so for different beam shapes and loads what will be the bending moment diagram this is required how to use these charts ready made charts are available actually in the books and on the internet you should know how to use this if you want to do the real projects how can you use this as a ready made reckoner we can say like this then analysis after the analysis we do the design of columns beams slabs or we do the design of water tanks design of steel structures steel sheds and you should know you know that for design we generally use the is codes so there are different clauses in is codes for design of members loads load combinations and one of the important point is the design basis report so generally in practice if you want to submit the calculations to the municipal corporation or the, your peer check engineers you should prepare this design basis report so what is meant by design basis report what is involved in that you should know this and if you want to design members you should know at in the beginning how to design it manually at least conceptual part so how to design the beams manually how to design the columns manually then slab calculation so we generally forget it uh, once we are pass out but in structural engineering at least this basic knowledge is essential beam design their reinforcement detailing like that design basis report in design basis report we generally uh, put all the data which we are taking for the modeling and design seismic load wind load like this what are the time period for that and see this you'll learn 
whatever i am just uh, telling you through this ipd you are going to learn in the training program but you should know at least what is required in the practice then drawing preparation is essential either you draw it by hand sketches or in autocad or revit is required for that these are the example of drawings structural drawings you should know what is detailing also see only drawing is not uh, sufficient should know what is the lap length what is the hook length and all these details of the structural drawings what uh, concrete grade should be used what is the detailing of footing detailing of columns how to detail for earthquake like this these are the standard drawings drawings of floors also for buildings then schedule of beam schedule of columns like this once you do the design definitely uh, after the drawing preparation you need to send it to the site and the site people are doing the construction of that building or, or that structure we can say so drawings are required for construction and definitely how the construction is done what is the construction sequence what are the procedures what is bar bending what shuttering material is used you should know at least basic part you should know as a construction even though you are working as a consultant at least basic part of the construction knowledge is essential to you like this then uh, when the building becomes old structural audit is required so basic knowledge of structural audit is required here what are the tests involved in the uh, structural audit then how it is done then if the members are not sufficient how to do the retrofitting so basic part you should know like this column jacketing and beam jacketing like this so this is tendering so whatever i discuss now <coughs> is regarding the engineering part analysis design drawings construction audit then comes project management and commercial for example you should know how to prepare the bar charts what are the quality systems in the site and what are the quality systems in the design also see in even consultancy offices quality systems are involved and you should know so how to prepare this gantt charts then health and safety is also important so at least basic part of health as safety is required what are the pps and how it is uh, used on sites and commercial awareness means you should know what are the rates of materials either it may be concrete it may be cement steel shuttering excavation or like that so what are the rates involved in that either material or labor and how to prepare the boqs so uh, as far as structural engineering is concerned at least you should be able to prepare the boqs of rcc quantities either it is rcc or steel structure we can say like boqs and other disciplines like architectural how to read the architectural drawings what are the expectation of the architects you should know and what are the implication of these architectural part on your structural drawings so you should know this these are the example of architectural drawings then geotechnical report you should know how to read that how to use it for foundation design i think you may be knowing how it is done uh, so you should know basic part of it how to read the geotechnical reports bore log reports like this and how to use it for foundation design then land survey means contour survey drawing <laughs> how to read contour survey drawings how to use it for uh, drawing preparation what is cutting filling basic knowledge you should know and mep services knowledge Uh, generally we don't learn this in college but in uh, reality you need to coordinate with this mechanical engineers electrical engineers like this so basic part actually is not much but because you need to coordinate with mep people you need to coordinate with architects then contractors civil engineers clients so you should know other disciplines also <clears throat> and softwares important whatever knowledge you have you should apply on the softwares so how to prepare the models in softwares like etabs so etab software is essential for analysis of buildings either it is static analysis dynamic analysis or earthquake analysis or wind analysis so all this you should know so you are going to learn these softwares from basic to advanced level here in the training program how to model it how to apply the loads and how to see the results like bending moment shear force then these are the example of uh, etab models of high rise building 
bending moments, deflected shapes, mode shapes like this. Then safe software is used for the foundation design. Either it may be rough foundation, combined foundation, pile foundation, isolated foundation like this. This uh, software can be used for either RCC building foundation or C structure building foundation design. See, all these softwares are essential because every software has its own importance and its use. For example, ETAP for analysis, safe for foundation design. Like these are the models of uh, SAFE. And StatPro is also similar to ETAP. Uh, it is used for either analysis of buildings. It can be used for analysis of water tanks and steel structures. See, mostly in the industry for steel structure and water tanks, StatPro is used either for analysis and design also. So you should know this software also. These are the example of uh, see, industrial shades models in the StatPro, water tank models like ESR, rectangular tanks, circular tanks, buildings like this. And AutoCAD software, all of you know, it is used for the drawing preparation, either steel structure drawing or RCC drawings and water tank drawings also. These are the example of drawings, structural drawings prepared in AutoCAD, so architectural drawings prepared in AutoCAD. And Revit is used for 3D modeling and drawing preparation. It is application of BEAM, building information modeling. Nowadays, uh, many companies are using this software in India also and out of India also, mostly. You can get the job as a Revit engineer if you want to work in the detailing and drawing. RCDC software is used for the design of footings, columns, beam slabs. And it can be used for, so as I said, uh, design of all members, structural members, RCC members mainly. And drawing also, it can be used for the drawing preparation, drawing detailing of beams, columns like this. It can be used for bar bending schedules and it can be used for BOQ preparation also. So RCDC software is very smart and a very popular software used in India and Middle East for design, drawing and BOQ also and bar bending schedule also. It's very versatile software. Excel programs. So even though we are using these advanced softwares which I told you, Excel is definitely essential. Uh, whatever uh, results of softwares are there, you should know how to check the results by using Excel programs and manual calculations. Because see, many times softwares may give wrong answers uh, if you do something wrong in the software. But it, that mistake gets trapped in this Excel program or design. So you can verify your results through these programs. So there are different programs available for column design, footing design, slab design, water tank designs, steel design, or retaining walls like this. So these are the example of Excel programs, column design, footing design, like this. You'll get all these Excel programs to you. You can use in your projects also. Add a professional, this software is used for the communication purpose generally. This is standard practice in the market. And whatever these IPD parameters one to five, I discuss with you, uh, conceptual part, software skills, this you should apply on the real projects then and then you get the experience because otherwise it becomes only a conceptual and theoretical knowledge you can apply on the real projects so in high rise building sector we are covering these four to five projects like a five story residential building 20 story high rise building we'll learn how to design our rcc retaining walls shear walls basement draft like this so in building projects if you want to work these are the example of projects you will learn in the project uh, in this training and that will develop an experience in this sector then in industrial sector generally we need to design the industrial shades you should know how to design tension member compression member columns how to design gantry girders trusses canopies mezzanines this is required in industrial projects if you want to work in this sector. And if you want to work in water sector, you should know how to analyze and design water tanks, underground tanks, fire tanks, overhead tanks, ESRs, clarifiers. It is required in sewage and water treatment plants and even, even building projects also. So you'll see these are the three sectors which are really important. 
like this building if you want to do the this structural design of this building structural design of high-rise building and you learn this as per the process which i discussed as per the ipd process there is a process of work that ipd process is a process which is used in the industry for doing the design of projects retaining walls what are the loads and design drawings everything a raft shear walls retaining walls like this industrial shed see everything is code basic knowledge design basis report analysis design how to do it soft or in softwares and in manual calculation also these are the examples of industrial sheds their models base plates again triggered us trusses portals mezzanine floors if you want to do this design canopies clarifiers that is circular tanks used in sewage treatment plants aeration tank esr for water treatment plants so this is you are going to learn actually in our training program circular tanks stat models like this overhead tanks that's it actually so these are the ipd parameters six parameters which has which is nothing but skills required to work on these projects and if you have this all knowledge together then it becomes an experience in the field and if you really do this seriously sincerely uh, there will be a lot of opportunities for you and first of all you, you will have a confidence in you very much and that confidence helps you to get the jobs to get the good salaries to start your businesses like this and these are the expectation in the industry so whatever whatever i'm trying to say is this is the way the skills are developed it's not that you are learning only one software like etab or autocad and that's it it's not sufficient there is a process and you should learn this all together as an integrated integrated approach we can say together all together and this you can learn in our training program which is seven month industry master's course all ipd parameters and all softwares you will learn uh, within seven months so this is quite good enough time uh, where you can learn if you really want to learn you should spend little more time actually it's not that you should uh, only learn 15 days one month like this generally that is not sufficient you should spend more time in learning and getting the experience uh, the training program is online and offline available in our training institute uh, so let me summarize what we are covering in this we are covering these uh, eight softwares along with the manual calculations uh, whatever softwares i told you autocad revit etab safe you will see uh, every software has a different application autocad for drawings revit for 3d models etab for analysis safe for foundation design rcdc for design of rcc members excel for all designs and stat for building analysis industrial shared analysis and whatnot so every software is a different software and different use and manual calculation you should know it will develop your concepts engineering knowledge which i told you ipd parameter school basics basics of structural engineering conceptual design analysis all that conceptual part which we have learned in the college but we don't know how to summarize this as a conceptual part that will be covered project management knowledge boq preparation regarding rcc you'll learn this and other discipline knowledge you'll learn this and we will cover all these uh, 15 to 16 projects uh, structures especially which are required in these three sectors uh, already i told you all those so this we will cover in this training program so conceptual knowledge project management then uh, boq design knowledge all this and with real projects and definitely if you have such kind of knowledge such kind of an experience in you you definitely can have opportunities job opportunities you can get the job opportunities either in mncs consultancy firms building industries industrial projects weight infrastructure like water sector sewage treatment plants so you can have a lot of opportunities in these areas and all over the world because this is the standard practice uh, followed all over the world as a ipd you can even search uh, in uk uh, there is a uh, 
uh, membership where this is uh, done uh, in australia it, there is engineers australia in new zealand it is ipens and in usa there are professional engineering uh, memberships in different uh, states so these are the ways the the experience gets developed who can join this training program it is for all kind of civil engineers either they are fresher job seekers or they are masters degree holder like mem tech phd it is also for working people either they are site engineers or they are structure engineers or they are professors it is also for them or diploma civil people also it is for all kind of civil engineers let me summarize uh, the benefits uh, in this seven month master industry master's course which is online offline you will get all eight software trainings all eight softwares which i discussed with you on four structure engineering sectors will be covered here more than 15 practical structures will be covered the training will be given by industry experts who are having experience more than 20 and 30 years so you are having uh, opportunity to uh, learn from these people they will share their experience also apart from this training how to develop your career and so on you will get the experience certificate you will get the software training certificate you will get the videos also because it is uh, uh, recorded videos also you'll get our training program is online live training program so the trainer is available online please keep in mind uh, it is not re only recording videos huh? please uh, the trainer will be there you can ask the questions to the trainer in the training they will take the sessions and to the next day you will get the video recordings of the same uh, session as uh, it covers a lot of software training uh, you will get the software setups uh, you can install on your laptops and computers you will get how to prepare your resumes that guidance will be given to you and if you see the training program content it is covering almost three to four years of experience knowledge so see it is covering a lot of things whatever we have learned in our uh, career and what is expected in different industries we have summarized that and we have developed this training program so it is very exclusive training program for all of you uh, which is giving you opportunity to learn in a very systematic way and at the end uh, you will get 100% placement assistance uh, once you do this training program. These are our uh, students who got the training and now they are in different companies working as a structural engineer. There are a lot of people actually who have taken the training. Now our batch will start on 1st of June okay and our training will be conducted in the evening 7 pm to 9 pm two hours the training will be alternate days that means one day holiday one day session one day holiday like this so you can practice in the holiday and if you have any questions even in between uh, during the office hours you can contact to our office uh, we will support you for assignment or project related support thank you all for having patience to listen my session and if any questions if you have uh, after this session you can contact our numbers uh, we are there to you for you okay so thank you all and good night to all of you